Praise the Lord, guys. Well, how about that? Are you there? I hope you're there. Praise the Lord. It's been quite the day with the, the internet services. Seven o'clock this morning, I got a text saying, oh, hey, we understand that there's an outage in your area and we're fixing it. And we just want to let you know that. And then they come up after the church service today, after we did our Bible study. And hey, your stuff's back up. And I never could get mine up working with the phone techs. And uh, so they should be scheduled to be here tomorrow. Will you please pray that I get my internet fixed? We were on data this morning. We're on data tonight. I pray it'll be a, a blessing. Work well. Is any human being out there? Are you there? I can't tell if you're there or not. This thing showed that it ended and then it popped back on. So whatever, man. Praise God. Well, hey, there is Vondo. Praise God. Is that this morning service, bub? Amen. Diane, good to see you. Good evening. Glad to have you with us. Praise the Lord. And so we just praise God for his goodness, his bounty, that Ephesians Bible study. Boy, that's some good stuff, isn't it? The word of God. And we encourage you in all things. Amen. Vondo says that's this morning's sermon. And being on data, it won't let me open up YouTube videos. It's uh, I went back to look at our video that Vondo put up here, this one he just posted, and uh, says, oh, yeah, that content is not available. And I said, what is no longer available? That content's no longer available. I said, what? And then I went and looked at the next one. They all said that on all our fault lines. I'm like, Vondo. Uh, he said, well, hey, it's looking good on my end. So anyway, I'm going through that right now. If you'll pray for us in that, because, you know, this is our ministry, guys. This is our ministry being online, the Internet. And hey, Gary, Gary says, hey, fam, God bless everyone. God bless you. And this is our ministry. And we know, we know they're coming to attack, guys. We know that. It, that's, that's not above us. We understand that. It, we're not below it. We understand that we are utilizing their stuff. But I also believe that with God, all things are possible. And all things are possible to him that believeth. I believeth. Amen. I believe God can do whatever he wants to do. And this is not just for now. It's for later, and it's for even after we've been raptured, that God will utilize these Bible studies, encourage the hearts of those who have been left behind. Vano says, before the rapture, guys, to be saved, you must believe. You must place your faith, your eternal existence in Jesus Christ and him alone, his death, burial, and resurrection. He paid your price in full with his blood. Believe, believe, believe. Now, if you refuse to do that, or you didn't even hear the gospel, now you find yourself after the rapture, you need to do what Vondo has said here and believe, and then also cry out to God to save you. Jesus Christ, save me. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. And whoever really does that at that time won't be ashamed. You'll confess him before men that he'll confess you before the Father which is in heaven. Amen. You're going to be a real Christian at that time. You're going to believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. There's no other thing that can save us. Now on this side and the other side. His death, burial, and resurrection. And then we get to go to heaven. You guys miss it who won't believe, but you can still go to heaven. And the requirement will be your head most likely. Most people will die. But come on, man. We see a bunch of you in heaven right there after the six seal earthquake. Uh, Vano said, I had a guy tell me that once saved, always saved is demon talk. That's what they're saying. They are devils. They have been seduced by the devil. They loved what the devil offered. They took it hook, line, and sinker, and now they believe it. Does the devils, do, do they want you to believe or not believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Do the devils want you to believe that once saved, always saved is a beautiful gift from the Lord? Or do they want you, you to think it's a, you know, an evil gift from the devil? Yeah, and that this is hardcore, guys. These guys who hate once saved, always saved. Man, we have so far, you talk about apostatized. The great falling away, it's happened right here on these churches, in these groups, the internet. The information age caused the explosion of the apostasy. And real faith has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And suffering shrinkage in 
true Christianity. The bride, she's a small number. She, the true bride of Christ Jesus is a small number. He said he was saved. I asked him what he did today to keep his salvation. Good for you, dude. Good for you. <laughs> so, so what did you do today to keep your salvation? Amen. How, how good were you before God? Can you share that with me? How holy and righteous are you? You guys remember that even righteous Job, there's three guys mentioned by God that he loved their faith, he loved their patience, and he would only protect those three guys when he comes to judge. He wouldn't even protect their children, only these guys. Job was one of those guys. God came to Job and was angry with him. There in chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41 of Job, and because Job justified himself. And God had to remind him, you're justified because of me. Just as if I had never sinned. You're righteous because of me, my righteousness. Not your own righteousness, not your own goodness, not your own, look what I've done today. And so Vondo put this guy on the spot and said, so what'd you do today to keep your salvation? Aren't you thankful that you don't have to do a thing to keep your salvation? Because salvation's a gift from start to finish. We covered that a little bit this morning in the three phases of salvation, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification is the immediate revival of your spirit. Your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins, and God wants to make you alive. And at your point of belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God comes inside us. He activates our spirit. He connects our spirit to the throne room in heaven. He's our umbilical. Praise God. We are, we are justified. We are saved immediately. There's nothing you could ever do to keep you from going to heaven. There's nothing you could ever do to keep God from loving you. What shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing is the answer. Amen? But here's the problem with modern day preaching. They preach the love of God, 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 until they've preached something that is not the love of God and calling it the love of God. They teach that because God loves you, man, things are great. And that's all they teach. People will come to church, and the first time they go to church, they're like, man, I need to go check out Joe Olstein's church. A lot of people are talking about him here in Houston. I've been invited by so many people. I'm going to go check it out. And they get there, and they talk about, man, God loves you. You're so awesome. And, and God has a plan for you. And God wants to do mighty things through you. And don't you think that life is over just yet? You get up. You pull yourself up. And you say, God, I'm going to go do this. And I'm going to overcome this. And I'm going to be a, a blesser in that. And the guy walks away just as lost as he was before he walked in, but now even more so. He's more solidified in his lostness, thinking he's saved because God loves him. Now, guys, God loves you at Calvary. That's where he, he, he doesn't love you outside of Calvary. Now, you won't hear Joel and the others say that. You may not hear your pastor say it. When Jesus comes to save you, He's saving you from himself, his anger, his rage, his wrath. He that has the Son has everlasting life. But if you don't have the Son of God, you don't have everlasting life. But the wrath of God abides on you. The love of God is only found at the cross in Jesus Christ, his death. And then later at that empty tomb, his burial and resurrection. That's where it is. His shed blood paid the price for you. That's where the love is. And that's what people need to be told. And outside of that, outside of your believing God's plan, God sacrificing his only begotten son in their wonderful covenant, the covenant of blood, the cutting, that's what covenant means, the cutting. And Jesus had to be cut and he was shredded, man. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, no remission. And uh, Jesus did that for us. And that's where his love is. Get yourself to the cross and believe. Get yourself to that empty tomb and believe. Final says, I asked him if he was a Calvinist. He got mad, but his page was full of Spurgeon and, and uh, J.C. Ryle and the other Calvinist preachers. <laughs> guys, don't be guilty <coughs> of quoting these guys. Sproul and John MacArthur and Paul Washer and all these fools. Steve Lawson. Do not quote these idiots. 
They may have a good quote and they will have good quotes. They have awesome quotes. But when they put their little name on there, you just told everybody Calvinist are awesome. And I, I agree with every Calvinist on the planet. Know who you're quoting. I got Christians quoting Buddhist monks and ancient Tibetan priests. Oh, he said this. And they're supposed to be Christian guys. So stupid. Have no idea how evil this is in the eyes of God. How unholy. Heather, amen. The real message they miss is how are you showing God you love him? That's it. That's it. Especially the, the saved. The saved after salvation. Yes, God loves you, but do you love him? How, how do you love him? And we only love him because he first loved us. And what is the true love? Not what they teach over there in Houston. Not what they teach on there in San Antonio. John Hagee, that's not the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Jesus Christ is over there at Calvary. His being slaughtered for you in front of his mama. His mama saw the whole thing, man. How terrible for her. How terrible for him. The shame, the pain, the physical and spiritual pain, man. That was all right there. The guilt that came upon him with all the sin that came upon him. The darkness. He, he, it all was upon Jesus Christ. And that is love. He took our sin. He took our reproach. He took our evil. He took our punishment from the Father. And instead of God judging us, God judged him. Now that is love. And now we love him because he first loved us. And we love him through loving his word. Through keeping his word regarded highest in our lives. The highest regard is his word. Alicia says, hi, family. Hi, Alicia. Hi, family. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Sean shared a cool code with me. This thing's a little short, dude, but it's powerful. Check this out. His license plate. All you people that laugh at us about numbers and license plate numbers and meeting up with the Lord here, there, and on the corner, and God has something to wink at you about and say, hello, I love you. Just a reminder, quit doing that, will you? Quit laughing and scoffing, and you get on board with God and understanding his thoughts and his ways, Okay. Alicia says, man, it's chilly in Texas. I asked God, can this be our last winter, please? I mean, that, that's a serious cry. That's the cry of my heart. I have to get out and work in this tomorrow. Right now, it's 11 degrees or 10, something like that. It's cold, man. And we're like, Lord, have, have some mercy on us. All right? And right here, we're in the South Texas and Arkansas. Our water pipes aren't buried too deep. And they're going to keep us in more than a 10-day deep freeze, colder than a freezer. At 11 degrees, we're going to get down there to 4 degrees plus the minus wind chill and, and all that. See, I lived in Nebraska where we had that all the time, but everything was wrapped and safe. You didn't worry about water pipes busting all the time. Amen? When I pass the plate around and put something in it every week, this proves you're saved. Yeah. Yeah. People just love that idea. I, I give to that ministry. I give to that devil so he could buy him a Rolls Royce. Uh, license plates are probably 75% of the numbers I see when I see my numbers over and over and over again. It can't be coincidence. And what, guys, the miracle, the miracle is in the timing. The miracle is that while they were pounding these out in the prison down there in Texas, Huntsville, Texas, pounding out the plates, or New Mexico, or California, and you happen to be in Florida, and here comes this plate from Texas, New Mexico, Florida, or, or California, and God just talks to you. And it's his timing, guys. He had that. He knew where it would be. He knew what car it would be placed on. He knew the intersection you needed to be when you need to see that. Because he's always, is he that gracious or not? Is he that merciful or not? Is he that meticulous or not? What are you saying if you say no? I'm going to tell you, you don't know him. You don't know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, I know a Catholic priest that read the Bible all the time, and he's still a Catholic priest, kneeling down to two bags of concrete with paint on it. Hail Mary, fill in the grace, blessed art thou among women, blessed fruit of thy womb. Please. All right, check this out. I'll show you the little picture of it. It's pretty cool. Can y'all see that? Let's see here. 
focus, focus. All right, that's the that's the picture. BR five four nine. Y'all remember that license plate? All right, let's see here. Heather says, I'm praying for you, all that aren't used to this cold weather, to keep your water pipes from freezing. Keep the faucets open. Just a wee bit to keep the water moving through. Not much, but a wee bit will keep it going. Keep them from freezing. Amen. Amen. That's true. That's so true. That's what freezes the pipe is non-movement. And the water inside the pipe, when it freezes, it expands. And when it expands, it blows those pipes apart. Yeah, data warning. I've used all my data. Oh, well. All right. Here is the license plate number. Baker Frank Zebra David. BFZD. 178. And here is God's me message to Sean in this thing. BFZD 178 is the work or the act of Jehovah. What? You guys know that 178 is the two witnesses? You don't think this is an act of Jehovah? This is just rinky-dink, flinky-dink, and you guys are all full of crap? And Or is God holy, mighty, awesome, and needs to encourage someone's heart every now and then through small things? BFZD 178 is the work, the act of Jehovah. Sean Mitchell, his car. 2 Samuel 718. 718? Like July 18th? You're kidding me. Just, no, that's, stop me for a second. Who am I, Lord God? Here's the whole verse, or, or, or the next verse. Right there in the brown, 2 Samuel 7, 18, who am I, Lord God? Then the full verse there, Exodus 3, 11, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? What? Over a license plate? Y'all are crazy! Um, God said it's a work or an act of him. I think you're crazy. And I think you're going to give an account for your stupid mouth coming out of a foolish heart. You better get your heart changed. You better get your mouth saved. That's what we preached about this morning. If you missed this morning's service, Vondo has put up the link. Get your mouth saved. Get your hands saved. Get your feet saved. Now, they won't be saved, this physical part of you, until the rapture. But you can bring them into subjection and put handcuffs on them. And God encourages you. He tells you to do that. Uh, Alicia says, thank you, Heather. That's a great word of advice. Keep the water faucets flowing, especially near the uh, coldest point of your house, the last coldest point of your house. If you're uh, outside, keep, keep those insulated, those sp uh, spigots. Keep your spigots insulated, and then keep, keep it rolling. Amen. Great word. Great word. That'll save so much damage. You're gonna have to, we're going to have to run them for 10, 11, 12 days here. But a water doesn't cost that much from the city water and light people. You just pay that water. It's better than paying the plumber what he's going to charge you. Amen. This morning was an excellent sermon. Thank you, Brother JB. Praise God, man. Praise, it's just the word, just the next verses, wasn't it? It's just when you preach the Bible in context, when you just preach what it's saying, that's going to be a great sermon. Hallelujah. From the heart of God. Hallelujah. Praise God, bro. I'm sure Jehovah smiles every time a connection is made with his holy word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so this code, let's go through it again real quick. BFZD178 is the work, the act of Jehovah. Sean Mitchell's car. Who am I, Lord God? Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? 
I know what the world would answer. Nobody. I mean, who is this guy? He lived on the top floor. Now he lives in the basement. I mean, he went from the height to the lowest. He went from the 17th floor down there to the basement floor. Underneath the ground, he's got to look up to look out the window. <laughs> Idiots. One of the two witnesses, 178. Praise God. And uh, his plate, the, the renewal is always his birthday, 718. And let's see here. I think that's it on that one. His tag expires this year on July 18th. Now, wouldn't it be great to be raptured before then? Hallelujah. I think Va Vondo marked it out the days for us. Um, I think it was July 28th, wasn't it, guys? Is Aaron here? Aaron knows those n numbers. Uh, July 28th is... The 50th day count this year, July 28th. It sure would be great to be gone by then, wouldn't it? Amen. And our uh, views today, today's views were 269 views. That's a pretty cool number. The 926, the 269, the 26.6 are, are the 29.6 days. That's the moon cycle, 29.6. Amen. All right. And here's another verse that goes in that. July 28th, wheat. Thanks, buddy. Vondo's got it. T July 28th is the wheat, the 50-day count, Sunday to Sunday. Right on? All right. Thank you, brother. Uh, Ezekiel 2.9. And when I looked, behold, a hand was put forth unto me, and lo, a roll of the book was therein. Um, this is in that license plate code. That verse right there. Boom. And when I looked, behold, a hand was put forth unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Is that the one you eat and it's really sweet on your tongue and bitter in your belly? Hmm. That code uses 178. And he found another one with the single numbers. Uh, this one was spelled out 178. And then the other is 178. Simple, simple numbers. Amen. Amen. So that's cool. I'm, I'd like to see that second one. That'd be kind of interesting. I've not seen it yet, not laid eyes on it. Praise God. What about you? What about you? Do you notice the Lord? Is everything Jesus to you, man? Do you see him here? And that? Do you see him there? Do you see the devil trying to jam the frequency? Do you see the devil trying to mess things up? Be observant. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking to wipe you out. Out. All he wants to do is kill you and your family. That's what he wants to do. That's his number one thing without any handcuffs on. But God's got some handcuffs on him, doesn't he? You and I, the restrainer, hold him down. Amen. Does anybody have any Bible questions? Any considerations? Any thoughts? Any ponderings that we can go over tonight? Tonight's a good night for that with my computer down, guys. I couldn't get to those codes, those old codes of Sean's. And uh, because my computer is down, my, my you know, internet, I can't, I can't go data on that. I have to go data on my phone, and my phone wouldn't go there. I couldn't backtrack. I couldn't find them. So, anyway, I just hear that. And also, um, by God's grace, we'll finish up Ephesians next week. And uh, we might even talk about that now if you don't have any questions. I'd like to cover some questions, to cover some concourse, some uh any thoughts that you may have? Anybody? Going once, going twice? Amen. Let's save these data minutes and call it a night. This will be a short night. All right. Why don't we open Ephesians 6? We'll finish that up. Ephesians 6. We finished in verse 18 today. The, we talked about the armor of the Lord. The armor of the Lord is the Lord himself. He is our armor. He is our helmet of salvation. He's the one that saves. He is our girdle of truth. Jesus is the truth. He is all the armor put on Christ. You know what Paul said? Put on Jesus, man. Take off the flesh. Take off the devil. Take off the world. Take all the garbage off. 
and put on the word of God, put on the truth, put on the belt of truth. We looked at those things today. The breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and we don't wear shoes between us and the Lord. That's holy ground. Re remember us talking about the tabernacle, when they set the tabernacle up and they took the boards of the walls and they set them in the sockets. They were never to touch the ground. They were to touch only the silver, the redemption price. Uh, JB, have you seen the microplastic in the snow and how it just rolls off? Yes. Yes. John Trazik, guys. Go look at John Trazik. And they have pictures in Colorado. Co Colorado had a bad mix of their chem snow, their chemical snow. So all this snow is man-made. Do not allow your children to eat this stuff, guys. I say this every year. And people always got pictures of their kids making snow cones. You're eating toxic plastic. You're, you're drinking crude oil once it melts. The stuff won't even melt with a lighter. And when you put a lighter to it, it smells like burning plastic. And this stuff was rolling off in sheets, man. W one people had a hammock. It looked like a hammock floating through uh, their woodworking. Oh, no, dude. Uh, Gary. Did Abraham go to sacrifice Isaac on the same mountain Jesus was crucified on? Yes, Mount Moriah. Sure was. That was the same place. You, you, you talk about a perfect foreshadowing. That's why this is vital. Boom, boom, boom. And what do we have there? We have the Father and the Son. It pleased the Father to bruise him. And right there, it wasn't time for the son to die. It wasn't time for the son to be sacrificed, but it was time for the, the, the situation to preach, to point to the sacrifice. And what does Abraham say? What does Isaac say? He said, Papa, Abba, I see the wood. I see the fire. I see the knife. I, I don't see the sacrifice. And what does Abraham answer? What is the Hebrew? Son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. He will provide himself to be this sacrifice. And they got up there and there was a ram provided for them whose horns were stuck in the thicket. And they took that ram, which God provided for them, and boom, they had their blood sacrifice. And that was a whole picture of Jesus Christ right there at the same location, Mount Moriah. Now, Gary, that was a great question, dude. Excellent. Excellent. Polar vortex means Nibiru is near to earth. That's what it means, guys. The snow that fell last night was like little styrofoam pellets every year, dude. Every year, Eric, for 12 years I've been observing this, preaching it, crying out, man. It is toxic. It is toxic, as styrofoam is. Guys, when you pour your coffee, your hot goods into a styrofoam, you're drinking styrofoam every time. It always it always leaches out into your drink, your beverage. Whether it's hot water, hot coffee, hot chocolate, it's killing you. They are killing us. Uh, it is believed to be the exact location. Also, evidence suggests the location to be seven, seven feet meters above sea level. This is Mount Moriah. Vondo's talking about Mount Moriah. 777 feet uh, slash meters above sea level. Not sure of the units of measure. It's 777 something. Amen, guys. The whole story is amazing. It's beyond amazing. That coward has been trying to take me out my whole life. She's talking about Satan. Take me out my whole life. It would be so amazing to see how Jehovah intervenes. His protection every day and every night. Now his holy angels fight for us constantly. Yeah, it's, it's going to be cool to see in the Bible room. Guys, how big these angels are, how many there are, and how oftentimes they saved you from peril, from the devil trying to take you out. He is a pansy. And he always, like hyenas, goes after the weak and beggarly. Goes after the, the gimps, the limps, the me's of the world. And he's coming after the weak and trying to destroy us. And he has done that. Now, his, holy, his holy angels fight for us constantly, saving us more than we could ever imagine. Every day, every day. Amen. Guys, get a clue on that, okay? Be sober. Be vigilant. 
because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And we got uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll answer you and I'll show you things you weren't even thinking about. I will blow your mind. Just ask me to blow your mind. That's what that means. Call on me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you never even comprehended. It never even crossed your path. And I'll show them to you. Ezekiel 3.33, a watchman on the wall. We are to be watchmen. What was today's sermon? If you're going to be totally clad in the armor of God, it involves praying always at the, at the, end, at the tail end of all of it. Praying, praying always, praying and watching thereunto. We're all called to be watchmen. Watchmen and watch women on the wall. And we're to be sober and vigilant in the things of God always. While the world's intoxicated on everything but God. The church. The church is doing that. The church, man, their bucket list, their vacations, they're more interested in let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. That stupid Barry Ah. <laughs> okay. He's out there. He ends his brand new video showing all the raptured people in his car. All, all it is is shirts. You know, Jesus saves and leave this as a testimony. And then he shows his outdoor tree lit up with Christmas lights. And he's singing, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Do you know the whole time they sang that for the entire month and a half after Thanksgiving all the way until they, you know, officially cut it off and he's still doing it was a ritual unto us being in the middle of a blizzard and being snowed out and a snow job on us so we can't see the truth. So it could be a shiny, take away everything, blow up people's pipes, create stress. That's what that song does. The weather outside is frightful. Keep singing there, buddy. Keep singing. The weather outside is man-made by the devil. That's going to be frightful weather. Go ahead and keep singing that ritual, dude. Just because it makes you warm and fuzzy. Plato says, if we approach the mount, as Abraham did, from Beersheba to the south, we begin at about 600 meters above sea level and climb to its peak at about 777 meters above sea level. And then he's provided the article right there to read it. And that comes from K House, which is Mesler. Now, he's been in heaven for quite some time now, but his mission goes on. Amen. Chuck Misler. He always calls himself Misler. Every time there was a double S, he always used the Z phrase. Funny. The Messiah instead of Messiah. All right. Chuck Misler. We say Chuck Missler. Amen. Great stuff. And so many Christians praise Barry. It's so shameful. His new date of rapture is 426-27 because that is Jewish Passover. So he's looking at the Jewish Passover for his rapture again. Now that falls in our watch, but it's not Passover. It's Adar. Okay? Again, Adar begins, Adar 1, on 324. We need 30 days there, 30 days of Adar, and then Adar 2 begins on 423, okay? And then he's talking 426, which is a cool number because that happened to be Sean's mother's birthday. 426, 427 is what they're calling. Alicia says, Bible question. Is it more pleasing to God for us to pray in faith specifically for something to happen or just to pray for his will? to be done. Uh, I know that Jacob didn't give up until he got a blessing, but Jesus taught that thy will be done. Both. Both. It's important, both. And you pray through until God tells you no. Okay? So, you pray his will. You say, Lord, all I want is your will in this thing. But uh, my heart would like this. I, I, I would like it to go this way, Lord. And I know you're big enough to make it go that way. And I pray that it will go that way. I pray that your mercy and your grace will lay down on me and cover me like a blanket and answer my prayer, hear my prayer, hear my cry, and keep praying it until he tells you to quit praying that. All right. Sean says, hey, brother, I just sent the other small code. And Vondo says, Passover on God's calendar, the God uh, calendar and Stellarium, the Bible code calendar and Stellarium calendar is 
June 5th. June 5th begins Passover there. It's the 14th day of the first month. Thanks, bro. Let's check out this other code, guys. Praise the Lord. Fresh manna. Fresh manna. All right, let's bring up that picture for you to see. All right, here is the picture for that fresh little code. He's giving up. Guys, we know that little, it means powerful, right? Come on, dude. You going to focus there? It's kind of the idea. Good night. I don't like what my cameras are doing. When I first started doing this, it was a clear, crisp picture. I don't know what's happened since then. Boom. All right. So that's what it looks like. I like that. I like that plain text skippage. It looks like at four. One, two, no, it's more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip a six in the plain text. I like that. All right. Uh, me and my husband prayed to have a son, and it happened on his timing, not ours. Amen. Yeah, pray specifics. The Lord loves specifics. He loves for you to wrestle. Now, you're going to end up with a hip out of joint when you pray like that. Sean says, it really shows how important numbers are to God. Praise the Lord. Let's go through that code. Numbers are important. 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet brought us the entire world, guys. Because, you know, God spoke. I want you to understand what I just said. Only 22 letters, uh, because Hebrew is God's language. That's what he speaks. He speaks Aramaic and Hebrew. Jesus is God. That's what he speaks. And when he spoke the world into existence, he used 22 letters, 22 characters of a language to do it. Small letters, which also represent numbers. There were no such thing as numbers. It was only alpha numerics. Aleph equaled one, bet equaled two, gimel three, and so forth. God's alphabet is his numbers. He loves numbers. He loves his alphabet. You and I better respect it like that. And nothing little is little. It's all huge. Amen? Uh, got reports that the Fort Worth Sandman Hotel was done by a terrorist cell. Yep. Police will be replaced by illegal mercenaries here, guys. It's what's going on. It's what's going on. People who hate the United States are going to be placed in uh, places of position. Jenny says, my birthday is 2-22-1988. There's your 22s right there. Praise God. All right. We're going to look at this code if my phone will back up. All right. Here's what that code says that we just showed you the picture of. If you didn't get to see that picture, you'll just back up the video. Back up the video, and you can see what I just showed. The ELS, listen to this, Jenny, is 77922. 77922. And here's what it says. The days he traveled with BFZD... 178, the days he traveled with that license plate, the days he rode, it could be another way to say it, the days he rode with that license plate, he brings out by the number, he brings out by the number, God does that, God uses Sean to do that, numbers and the letters, S. Mitchell, Moses, the prophet, Moses saw Lampstand, the verse, Isaiah 40, 26. When I see that 26, guys, you always got to stop. That's Jehovah. Isaiah is 23. 40 is the completed time of testing. And then Jehovah. Now let's look what that verse says. Okay? Lift up your eyes on high and see who hath created these things. He that bringeth out their Host by number, he calleth them by name, by the greatness of his might, and for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. He's just a little license plate. Yeah, not to God. God's trying to wake you up. Everybody at the great white throne judgment are in trouble. For all the times God has intersected with them and they wouldn't recognize him. 
And you Christians who are supposed to have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that know and understand, and you won't come aboard, you better wake up, man. You better come around to the way God does things. Not the way you do them if you's God. The way God does them because he is God. And it really shows how important numbers are to God. Let's look at that again. The days he rode, he traveled with BFZD 178. He brings out by the number. I love that. S. Mitchell, Moses, the prophet. Moses saw, lampstand. Lift up your eyes on high and see who hath created these. He that bringeth out their host by number, he calleth them by name, by the greatness of his might, and for that he is strong in power. Not one faileth. Amen. God takes care of everything. That's awesome, bro. And that's his license plate. And he's had it for so long and just the Lord put it on his heart. Hey, let's check out that license plate number. Amen. And uh, he did. And check out yours. Guys, you've been assigned. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That means when you went down to the DMV and they gave you that plate, that was ordered by the Lord. You're saved, right? That was ordered by the Lord. When you did that for your mama's car, when you did that for your kid's car, your grandkids, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The Lord knows what it's about. Get in on what the Lord knows. He desires that. That's checking out his secrets. He does nothing willy-nilly. Not with you, his bride. Do you think God does anything willy-nilly with you, his bride? That things are by chance, circumchance? Is that what you think? Or do you think God has assignments and he's appointment and he's perfect and he wants you to know that he's been loving you the whole way? Even before you were saved, he died for you while you were a sinner. And he's been directing you to his heart ever since the day you were born while the devil was trying to kill you. Wake up and see. Get on that watchman's wall. Get on that tower. And watch and pray. Okay? You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses are on that watchtower. They're watching for the wrong stuff. They're praying to the wrong God. Just because you're on a watchtower don't mean you're godly. Just because you think you're woke up right now at this time doesn't mean you're woke up. You better have a tender heart toward the things of God. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. I love that code. I'm going to check out what the numbers in my license plate means now. Thanks, Sean. Amen. Amen, Heather. Praise the Lord. I forgot what my plate says because I can't remember things, but mine's pretty powerful. I just got a br brand new plates with my little car three years ago. And uh, they, they say a word. Amen. Amen. Uh, why don't we look at this Ephesians thing and we'll close out the night. Praise God. Thank you for those codes, Sean. Just, you know, it's just a little license plate. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> All right. Verse 19. Paul is writing, okay? Paul is writing. And he says, As for me, that utterance may be given unto me. And remember, he's talking about praying, praying always. He, Paul says, pray for me that I'll say the right thing, do the right thing. My, my speech will be right. When I write letters, they'll be right. I'll be listening to the Holy Spirit. Sean says, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, Sean's a Bible writer like Paul. Why don't we need to pray for him? Pray for me. Pray for Sean that he would have utterance, that he may open his mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And that's me. I'm, I'm the vocal side of these Bible codes. Pray that I'll vocalize them well, say it right. Have the right heart, have the right timbre, have the right boldness, have the right fire. Amen. We pray that for Paul. Paul was asking all his contemporaries, guys, when you read this letter, will you just stop, drop, and pray for me? Please. Will you stop, drop, and pray for us? And I'm so thankful Vano puts that up every night. Pray for Sean. Pray for Johnny Boy. We love that. It's needful things. Amen. Pray for me that I open my mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel. Isn't that what we're doing? We're making known the mystery of the gospel. Now, you only got about four or five months for this part of the mystery of the gospel. Then it changes. What is this mystery of the gospel? Believe. 
Whosoever believeth in Jesus, what he did for you, his death, burial, and resurrection, his shed blood, he paid it in full. If you'll believe that and that that includes you and that's the only way you can be included is if you'll believe it, you shall be saved. Now, that's the mystery of the gospel that is no longer a mystery. What's a mystery, and, and it, but it's become a mystery again because people won't believe it, just like this guy Bondo was talking to today. They don't like once saved, always saved. They don't like salvation being a free gift. They want you to earn it. They, they want you to bring all your Boy Scout badges and show us what kind of a good scout you are. And then God's like, nope, I take the filthiest, the dirtiest, the nastiest. Jesus became all that so that guy could be set free and become the most righteous of them all. With God's righteousness, perfection, the mystery of the gospel is believe. In about four or five months, it'll change just a little bit. It'll be the believe and then you need to call out to God, Jesus, will you save me? Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua Hamashiach, will you save me? And you need to tell somebody, I just called on the name of the Lord and I've been saved. And confess it before men unashamed. You'll be saved. Kush says, amen. Me and my mom pray for everyone here every day. God bless you all. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Tell mama we love her. We're praying for her health. Uh, Cush's mama's health is not so great. Cush's health is not so great. Pray for them. Pray for them as they pray for you. That's what this whole Christian thing is all about. This bride of Christ thing. We take care of each other for we are one unit. We are one man in Christ Jesus. We are one bride. We are one church. We are the body of the head. Jesus is the head and we're the body. Pray for one another. So pray for Paul. Pray for the preachers. Pray for the men of God. Verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, the gospel, the mystery gospel. Paul was an ambassador for the mystery gospel. Jesus Christ gave it to him alone. And he was the guy, the lone soldier going out there and representing it. The lone ambassador in a foreign country with a foreign word to proclaim the truth. And he said, pray for me. And I am in jail. I'm in these bonds. I'm in these handcuffs. I'm in these chains chained up to this soldier next to me, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And here he is. He, he said it twice. Please pray for me that I may open my mouth boldly. And now pray for me that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Verse 21. But that ye also may know of my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and fellow minister of the Lord, shall make it known unto you in all things, whom I've sent to you for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs and that ye might comfort your hearts. Stop for a second. Tychicus. He just throws that name out in passing. What do you know about Tychicus? This guy's important. This guy's vital to the kingdom of heaven. He was vital to Paul. He's vital to us. He's in the Bible. He'll be in the Bible code. If Sean, the Lord laid it on his heart to go look for a Bible code about Tychicus and his faithfulness at a um, change of times, a change of ways, introducing the mystery, a dispensational change. Tychicus is right there. And Tychicus is a big part of everything. What about him? He was from Asia Minor, and he met Paul on his third missionary journey in Acts chapter 2, I think it was, 20, verse 4, okay? Tychicus, here he comes. He meets up with Paul. God has a plan for this guy that he doesn't even know about, okay? And he's the one that Paul sent money with from the church of Corinth down to Jerusalem to take care of those saints because they couldn't get jobs because they were preaching Jesus. They believed Jesus and everybody in Jerusalem was trying to kill them off like they did their head, Jesus Christ. And they couldn't get jobs. They were picked on. They were hurt. They were poor. They, they were just broke down and beat down. And they heard the news of it up there in Corinth and they took a big offering. So we're going to take care of the saints, our brothers and sisters down there in Jerusalem. And Tychicus was the guy that had the money along with the group that that was sent with him. And he was also, and you'll see that in Romans 15. Um, he was with Paul uh, on the second uh, Roman imprisonment. Okay, he hung out with Paul while Paul was in prison. So many forsook Paul, but Tychicus didn't. We don't know much about him, but God does. 
This guy had a big part in your spiritual growth. You know, Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. That's a pretty powerful word right there, huh? It'll save a man's soul. The mystery of the church, the mystery of Jesus Christ and saving the church. And he delivered the book of Ephesians, the one you and I are reading, and Colossians to the church because Paul was in jail. Tychicus was the guy who took Ephesians so you and I could have enjoyed this morning's blessing so we can enjoy the one right now. If you're listening with your ears on, your heart open, Tychicus was that guy because he was with Paul and Paul wrote the letter and sent it by way of a man he could trust. Tychicus, get to know him, get to know the names in the Bible. He'll be in the Bible code and so will you. Your name is there. You want people to stomp all over your name, think worthless of you, da-da-da-da? Or would you like to see your name from God's perspective? Everybody's going to one day. We see Tychicus, we don't know much about him, but there's a whole lot more there than we know. Okay? Also, um, he accompanied Onesimus. So he delivered the book of Philemon as well. Just one little chapter, if you'd call it a chapter, one little portion about grace and forgiveness and somebody going from being a reprobate slave to being a saved slave. A man of God, a fellow brother. You're his master, he's the slave. We talked about that the last two weeks here at Ephesians. There's no difference at the cross. Now you do your jobs, employers and employer and employees and employee. You do your jobs accordingly to the glory of God. And at church, there's no difference in the two of us. At the Bible study, in the kingdom of heaven, the bride of Christ, we're the same. The ground is level at Calvary. Mount Moriah, the ground is level. He relieved Titus in Crete. Paul said, I really would like Titus to come see me sometime. Tychicus said, I'll go down there and I'll preach and let him come up here. I'll cover the church down there in Crete and Titus can come visit you. Are you grateful for that? You like the book of Titus, don't you? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. You like that? Amen. Written to Titus in Crete from jail. Pastoral epistles. And this guy said, hey, I'll go down there to Crete. I'll relieve him and he can come up here and visit you. Praise God. And the very last book that Paul wrote was 2 Timothy. A personal letter to Timothy. He said, oh, I sure wish Timothy was here with me. You remember that? When you come visit me, will you bring my script? Will you bring the letters I've been writing? Will you bring my cloak? Will you bring the parchments? Will you bring that to me? And the reason he could do that is because Tychicus went down there and relieved Timothy and preached in his pulpit and shepherded that church so Timothy could go up and visit Paul and bring him these things. That's our beloved Tychicus, guys. Aren't you thankful for the book of Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, First and Second Timothy, Titus? You like that? Tychicus, fellow brother in the Lord. We're going to see him. And we're preaching this sermon tonight because we're about to see Tychicus. And it'd be good for you to know him and thank him for being such a faithful servant to the Lord Jesus Christ because his blessing has lasted for 2,000 years straight down into your lap tonight. We praise God for him. Amen. And in first, uh, 2 Corinthians 8.22, he is the unnamed believer. Let's look at that real quick. 2 Corinthians 8.22. And we have sent that. Now, this is Paul talking, right? He wrote Corinthians. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent. This guy over and over and over proved himself faithful and diligent. Hard working for the Lord. You and I don't know nothing about him unless we studied it like you know I had to because we were in the book of Ephesians. Let's learn about this Tychicus guy. Ephesians didn't tell us anything about him. But he's all over the Bible, and that's how God writes the Bible. That's how you rightly divide the Bible. Here a little, there a little, there a little. 
precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, and you put all the there littles together, and you got you quite a story on a man of God. Amen. We have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things. How much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you all, man. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21. Paul's concluding the book of Ephesians. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful, diligent minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. He's not going to keep nothing back. You can be trusted with his story that he's telling, with the message he's preaching. He ain't going to hold anything back. He's going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, because this guy loves the truth. His name's Jesus. And we can depend on him while I'm sitting in jail. I can trust this guy. Man, I hope that's said about you. Be that person. Diligent, faithful. Verse 22 whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. The shepherd, exhorter, encourage you. Man, Paul's, Paul, he's been beat up. He's been whipped. He's been all this stuff. But his joy, his spirit's awesome, man. I'm telling you of his affairs and how he's a doing and he said hi. And he probably had personal letters for several people that Tychicus delivered. Hey, this is for you, Sally. This is for you, Joe. This is for you, Jimmy, from Paul. And Paul said, I can trust him with my word. I can trust him with the Lord's word. Verse 23, peace to you, brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be upon, uh, grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Get your highlighter out. Get your highlighter out. Get your pen out and circle this thing. We're going to go bury awe on this scripture, okay? 24, grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. They read his Bible. They know his Bible. They hide his Bible. They share his Bible. They love Jesus in sincerity. They don't just, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Now, these people love Jesus in sincerity. They love his Bible. They share his Bible. They teach his Bible. They teach their children his Bible. They teach classes his Bible. They love his Bible. They pray his Bible back to him. Their whole lives are about his Bible because they love him in sincerity. Amen. That's how he ends this entire book of Ephesians. Fighting the good fight, good soldiers, being faithful to the Lord. And uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with the people who love him in sincerity. Amen. Read that last verse and we'll call it a night. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. That's you, ain't it? Right? You love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You love him in sincerity. Right? Let that be you. Because this verse is for you. As the others were for Tychicus, and the people reading it, you and me, that Tychicus verse was for us. Wow. Tychicus was quite the diligent, faithful guy who could be trusted. Amen? Amen. Grace be with all them, all you. Grace, what's that? Gifts, bounty, blessing. God himself is that blessing. He is that bounty. He is that gift. May God, the beautiful gift of Jesus Christ be with you all. Who? All those who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Sincerely. With his sincerity. Amen. Amen. That's how he ends this. Amen. Truly. Truly. Amen. All right, guys. Love you. That's the conclusion of Ephesians. We may go into Philippians next. I believe that's what I was thinking about. If the Lord keeps leading me there, that's what we'll do. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. The book of joy. The book of joy, man. And what, what do we love? We love God's word. We love the mystery. We love the truth that's been given us by way of Paul. The mystery church. It's about to come to a conclusion. 
and we're at a dispensational change, folks. You are a blessed, awesome, wonderfully blessed people. Love Jesus back in sincerity and truth. Amen? Amen. His banner over me is love, George. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. George, I don't know if you were able to start with us, but Sean shared two small codes with us tonight about his license plate. What a blessing. Amen. Uh, Evelyn said, my reading today, was that, was that Philippians was your reading? Amen. We love you all, guys. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, please help us. Help us to love you in sincerity. Help us to love you with all our hearts. Help us not to be deceived. Uh, help us just to read your word, soak your word, just embrace your word. Let it be part of our hearts, part of our minds all day long. Let it be all of our heart and all of our mind, all of our soul and all of our strength. And uh, we want to love you back. We're so grateful to be a people here at the end of this dispensation. The raptured bride, raptured alive bride. What a blessing. I pray for every soul here that we will be seasoned with grace. We will learn who your people are in the Bible that you admire, the Tychicus, Tychicuses of the whole Bible. Lord, may we be like Tychicus, be faithful, be diligent, be trusted with your word with other people. And may we be that. May we walk humbly and holy before you every day of our life. We praise you. I pray for everybody here in the cold. Keep our pipes from freezing. Keep our homes safe. Keep the power on, we ask. We ask believing. We ask these things, knowing you have the power to do that, knowing the devil wants the opposite. He wants this message stopped every night. But we believe that you want it to go on, and we want it to go on. It's such a blessing to me. And these others have said it's a blessing to them. And I pray you'll keep the blessing flowing. We praise you. Bless Sean. Thank you for this wonderful codes tonight, these two codes uh, about the simplicity of numbers and plates and how powerful they are and how mighty they are and how poignant they are. And we just praise you for that. Bless him. Bless him where he is. Bless him every day. Bless him in his health. Bless him in his care. Bless him in his apartment. Just keep him safe and warm there. And just keep encouraging his mind and joy with these codes he discovers. Your word, your heart, your fire. And we praise you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen guys. We love you. We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Yeah, we read that this morning, didn't we? We are that people. God has called us to be that people. Amen. I love you guys. I appreciate doing this every night with you. It's a blessing to me and encourages me. George says, amen, Donna, amen, Cush, amen, 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 amen. Truly, I love you guys. By his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Jenny says, amen.